Crates can be useful for travel if your dog ever needs to stay at the vet or to keep puppies safe and out of trouble for short periods during the day. Crates can also be used for puppies at night while they sleep. Dogs are social animals. It's ideal to place a crate next to the bed so that they still feel safe in close proximity to you. Avoid using a closed door crate for more than one to two hours during the day. Overuse of crates can be detrimental to a puppy or adult dog's emotional and physical well-being. It's a great idea to leave an open door crate inside of a gated area or exercise pen. This will allow your puppy to enter or exit the crate of his or her own choosing and will set the stage for a puppy that has a safe, secure place to stay if they ever need to be left alone. This video will show you how to introduce this gated area to your puppy so that your puppy develops positive associations with this space so that ultimately you can use it when you need alone time to take a shower or if you need to leave the house. These training exercises require a high rate of reinforcement. In some cases, you can use your puppy's meals for training. You can also supplement those meals with a moist, meaty, nutritious training food that can be easily broken into small pieces without crumbling. Step one, positive associations with a mat. Start off by offering food on a training mat. Be generous with your reinforcement. Reinforce for 15 to 20 second periods of time. Calmly say the word good with a warm, genuine voice as you feed your puppy. Avoid giving your puppy a verbal cue like go to place or stay. Leaving these verbal cues out of the picture will help your puppy learn to offer these behaviors without always having to hear a cue. Step two, positive associations with the crate. Teach your puppy that the crate offers an abundance of good things. Place their training mat inside the crate and then scatter food on the mat. Give your puppy the opportunity to walk in on their own four paws. Patience is key. Avoid the temptation to push or place your puppy inside the crate. The end goal is to have a puppy who happily and willingly walks inside of their own choosing. Step three, the turnaround. Capture and reinforce your puppy the moment that they turn back in your direction. Be generous and offer them as many rewards as possible before they have the opportunity to walk out. If and when your puppy walks out of the crate, freeze and withhold food for about five seconds before placing a little piece of food back inside the crate. With repetition, your puppy will learn to orient towards the crate, even if you're still sitting there with food in hand. Remember not to use the word crate or stay or no. We want the puppy to be problem solving and to ultimately offer these behaviors on their own without needing to hear any cues. Step four, stepping away return and reinforce. Once your puppy is choosing to go in an open door crate of his or her own choosing and settling inside, you can begin to raise criteria. I rarely leave a puppy in a closed door crate during the day. Instead, I like to train puppies to use open door crates inside of a gated area or exercise pen. To teach the puppy to settle inside of a gated space, you can step on the other side of the gate. Take a step or two away and then step back and reinforce. Repeat this a few times over before opening the gate and giving your puppy a break. Step five, break time. You can encourage your puppy to take a break by drumming on the ground in front of the crate. The break will give your puppy an opportunity to get a drink of water, to give your puppy an opportunity to potty, or to just hang out. The best learning happens when puppies have short intervals of time to step away from the training and process newly acquired information. In the early stages, you want your break to be relatively calm. You don't want your break activity to overshadow your training. 
After your puppy takes a 30 to 60 second break, you might find that your puppy is ready to walk back to his crate in anticipation of more training. If this becomes a common occurrence, your puppy might be ready to move to the next step. Step six, I'll be back in a flash. It's a good sign when your puppy starts to trot back to the crate after a short break. If my puppy appears calm and relaxed with me on the other side of the gate, I will grab something from a nearby table, walk back and reinforce. Step out of sight for a second. Walk back and reinforce. Sit down on the couch for five seconds. Walk back and reinforce. What if my puppy isn't calm and relaxed? If my puppy stops taking food, begins to stress whine, bark, bite, or scratch at the gate, I will give the puppy a break. When you come back to training, work on a more basic version of the same exercise. Drop back to a variation of the training where your puppy offered a higher level of success. You can always build from calm, confident behavior. How often should I practice? Make training part of your daily routine with your puppy. You can use breakfast and dinner as an opportunity to connect with your puppy and build value for calm behavior inside of their safe space. Practice these exercises for five minutes once or twice a day for five to 10 days. If you are not consistent with the training or if your puppy already has negative associations with the space or with the crate, you may need more time. When can I leave my puppy alone? Remember that the best training is all about the feedback that you are getting from your puppy. If your puppy ever appears to be struggling, I encourage you to slow down. Once the puppy is happily walking into this gated area during your training sessions, you can take it to the next step. Step seven, the final touches. To close the gap between these formal training sessions and the practical use of the crate, I will start off by having the puppy in their safe space with a chewy when I take out the trash or go to water the outside plants. When you do this, it's ideal if the puppy has already had other mental and physical needs met. For example, I might do a short play session, make sure they have an opportunity to go potty, and sit outside with them for 10 to 20 minutes for a watch the world session. If their physical and mental needs are already met, they are more likely to curl up for a nap once they walk inside their gated safe space. I personally love having my adult dogs up on the couch with me or sleeping in my bed at night. That being said, if I'm raising a puppy, I like to set it up so that the majority of naps and nighttime sleep happen in their gated space or in a crate. I make sure that the coziest spot to take a nap during the day is inside an open door crate. I also usually have a puppy sleep in a closed door crate next to the bed in the first year. The more that your puppy associates the crate and or a gated space with rest and relaxation, the calmer your dog will be when you have to take a shower, leave the house, or if they ever have to stay at the vet. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.